upset they hadn't completed, looked at the scoreline, looked at how long was left, and thought, oh, I watched the um, I watched the watch along that I didn't that I recorded last night instead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I watched this one on catch up. I didn't, I didn't watch it live, but um, it was it was a most unwarrior like performance. I think before this game, I don't think most people were looking forward to this one. It was, yeah, two yeah, teams who weren't expected to do much. Um, but the Warriors were, as 43 completed sets in a row <laughs> says, were unbelievably disciplined, um, which is not what you expect from them whatsoever. Um, yeah, for, just think of that forty-three sets without making a mistake. That's that's insane. No drops, no anything. And that's a um, lot of sets. And we did see some lopsided set counts, didn't we? This yes, this. Week. Oh yeah, a lot of them were six six to go ones, but yeah. it's still a completion. Oh yeah, same as the tryers. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, yeah, it was you know it was a stat that was definitely benefited by the new rule, but. You know, warriors don't don't you know keep hold of the ball like that. No, <laughs> they just don't do that. No. And the other thing they don't do is nil teams, but they've done that. They did that. Um, they did that at the weekend, and uh, they have to get a lot of credit. You know, they are the team that's making the greatest sacrifice. They they should be everyone's second team. Yeah. If definitely. you believe in if you believe in such a thing. Um, but on the flip side of that. The dragons, they look worse than the titans, and that's flipping saying something. Um, just completely co- no confidence at halfback for me. Um, they they didn't look you know they didn't have any kind of cutting edge um, in attack. The dragons, very prosaic, very pedestrian, and it, it didn't look like they'd be you know it didn't look like they'd score if they were still playing now. So it's no surprise they got nailed. Fair enough. Not good for the Dragons, then. Um, next game. No fan reviews on this game, but I thought this was a, was a, was a, a cracker. It's the Sharks, 16. The West Tigers, 28. And now it was um, 16-10 in favour of the Sharks at halftime, so they had the better of the first half. But West Tigers, uh, inspired by a couple of moments of, of magic from Old Man Marshall as well, had a really great comeback, and um, I think was it North Aluma had a a big say, t- a big part to say in that as well in the last twenty minutes of the game. But really, they they won comfortably in the end with the great second half performance. The the West Tigers. It was definitely a case of they they, they came out of the gates quick. You know, this I think they, they scored ten points before the Sharks had even you know um, yeah. found out where the where the syringe was, and they. But then, they, as is typical of the Tigers, they kind of they fell out of the game and they started to lose the arm wrestle and the Sharks do what the Sharks did and, and got back ahead. But it was encouraging for, for West that they actually did come back and, and, and did it in the end and, and came out with a win. Yeah, it was a, it was a, an impressive performance against a, 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 tip, a, you know, a difficult opponent in the Sharks. Yeah, I don't really like watching the Sharks play. Um, no, the, 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 they're a ter- terrible sure viewing Johnson experience. Hasn't even changed that because <laughs> he's yeah. just a mistake waiting to happen. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's... no. The, the only thing I have to say about the Sharks that that in the, in their positive because because I too I can't stand them. You know, Josh Dugan and and, and all and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Wade Graham was brilliant in this game for them. Um, He's a fantastic player, is Wade Graham. Um, and but, you know, he, he really sparked their, their comeback. And doesn't look like he should be good, does he? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he looks a bit tubby. Like if I was going to say any player looked like he was overweight coming out of lockdown, it'd be Wade Graham. But he looked like that before, and <laughs> he was still good anyway. <laughs> it just, it doesn't look like an athlete, but. Is got a lot of natural ability to to play this game, um. But yeah, w- well done to the Tigers, deserved win for Michael Maguire's men. Um, the next game was the big game, the main event. I'm surprised we didn't get more fan views on this one, to be honest, as well, because it was the one with most of our British players on display. Um, it was the Storm six, the Raiders twenty two. George Williams with two try assists and a hundred running meters, and Hodgson and Whitehead also played. Of course, Sutton and Bateman are injured. 
I'll I'll read out what Genghis had to say, and then I'll let Mark just have a have a, have a gush about Williams. Um, Williams was brilliant at half, um, much to the surprise of the Aussie commentators. Outrageous pass for the uh, first try, nice step for the second, and planted a stone player with a nasty tackle. Um, highlight of the game for me was the miraculous try saving defence of Tapané uh, to de- deny uh, Melbourne's Olam. Um, Raiders got a really nice try at the death as well. Storm well beaten. Yeah. I've so come on this, then, to, to, to talk about your boy. I've said this for years, haven't I, about George Williams' talent level. Um, I, I, I've said before, I, I I think he is the best player that I've seen come through at Wigan in the last 20 years. I think he's better than Sam Tompkins. But in terms of ability and, and, and that sort of stuff, it just feels... It just felt right on the day, and it's weird. Maybe not having a crowd there and something like that maybe helps Georgie Boy. I don't, I, I don't know. But he just seemed so confident, didn't he? That's yeah. the main thing to take from it. He just seemed so confident, and, and he did play what was in front of him, but also he made things happen too, and he's always had the skills to make to make things happen just whether he picked the right moments and stuff and we even saw that in uh, was it round one where he made the break and then um, just delayed throwing the pass and so he then couldn't throw the pass so had to get tackled and, and, and knocked it on as he was going towards the line That you know decision making was a bit off but in this game it, it was there whatever he's been working on during lockdown you know the decision making was the one missing piece from Williams being world class, and if he's if he's bringing that to the table, he can. Yeah, you know, he had the storm players not knowing where he was going to go. He had them on the back foot, you know, the old Rangi chase, throw it to yourself and catch it, and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and and a couple of times he came all the way across back to his old side of the field, the left, and and nearly set up tries out on that side as well with with some some nice play as well he had one bad kick he had one missed tackle but luckily was um, you know vindicated by the, the video ref when Pappenhausen uh, d- dropped it uh, or did he but whatever you know he got away with one there let's say did, did George but there was that great hit in defence and Tapane's try saving game yeah try saving defence was yeah even better than Morris's and um uh, Latrell Mitchells that we talked about on the other game before but let's not forget George had one of them too where he came and hit the guy's arm as he was reaching out to, to put it down and, and forced it loose so he mm. even saved a try as well he, he was he was outstanding in this match he really yeah, was he, he had, he, yeah I mean and he, he really did have a great game it's, it's not just your um, um, tinted glasses um, no he, he was really good but I thought I thought the Raiders were They've they've got something over the storm. Wouldn't it have been great? I know, like Tapané deserved it because of his defensive effort as well. But wouldn't it have been great if that ball just bounced for George at the end as well to finish it off with a try to that that would have been great. But but yeah, sorry, I don't even know what you said. I'm still thinking about how good George Williams was. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean the, the 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 pass for the first try out wide was. Absolute world class. Yeah, and that's a, one of the best passes you'll see all year. A left to right pass as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, no one got in touch on the next one, but um, uh, did, I was enjoyed there anything it. Anything else more to say on on this one? Did we think the storm were with the storm out of sorts, or was it just that scramble by Raiders made it so so much harder for them to? Because they did have a few, they did have a good number of breaks. The storm, didn't they? But the Raiders always covered them up, and the Raiders' defense reminded me of like Wigan 2016, when it felt like people just got to a point where they couldn't score against us anymore. It felt like Storm were a little bit off their best. Yeah, they were. But was that? But the Raiders, the Raiders were very good. The Raiders forced them into it. Oh yeah, I mean Storm would have beaten probably. You know, 12, 12 of the other teams in the NRL on um, whatever day this was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, st- I still think maybe some of the more mobile sides have got the benefit at the moment, whilst people are still getting to fitness. If you've got some mobility and speed, and with two of the best running halves in the competition in White and Williams, you've got some of that. Uh, 
haven't you? Which which does help. Whereas Storm have got massive forwards, haven't they? You know, Nelson and Sofa Solomon and Jesse Bromwich are two of the tallest players going. Uh, so that maybe plays into this at this stage. But the Raiders have got the wood on the Storm. That's for sure. Yep, certainly have. Next one. Yeah, why did no one get in touch on this one? It was the Panthers no and the Knights thought 14. Um, someone did get in touch, actually, after we put it together. Joshua's granddad, John Scott, got in touch to say they needed Mark Sneed in this game. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, all those drop goal attempts for, for 10 minutes of regular time and then 10 minutes of added on time. But, yes. yeah, the, the, the rarity of a draw in the Golden Point era. Yeah, no, I... I... I enjoy this. It, yeah, again, the Panthers get 14 points ahead of a team and then decide to stop playing. Because um, the Knights didn't look, you know, the Knights lost their two of their blooming playmakers in the first five minutes. Uh, Mitchell Pierce went off, um, and the other guy whose name slips my mind went off as well. And yeah, th- they were they were struggling, and the Panthers kind of got up on them, but. This is why, for me, although the people talk about the Panthers as, you know, outside chances or whatever, they just haven't got a killer instinct for me, Penrith. They just never seem to be able to kill teams off. So, for me, that they, they, they'll never they'll never win anything while they haven't got that instinct to um, to beat a team like the Knights, who are, you know, at the end of the day, are, are probably mid-table, you would expect. Yeah, well, both teams were missing their star players from the start, weren't they, with... Um... The Panthers being without Cleary and the Knights being without uh, Ponga, but that loss of Pierce and Watson in the first ten minutes or That's so it, really Watson. did yeah. hit the Knights. And the Panthers took good advantage of that. They, they, you know, they, they really did, didn't they? They, they, they went into half time with um, a fourteen-six lead, and really it should have been fourteen-nil. But Saifiti scored right on the hooter in a really bit of lazy defence under the sticks that he was allowed to carry the men two or three metres and get that ball down it, it, it was that was poor from from the Panthers yeah. at that stage but um, but before that we saw just how great Villiarmi Kikau is I mean he's one of my favourite players to watch uh, definitely one of my favourite players to watch runs, runs fantastic lines absolutely full commitment in everything he does but has some uh, ball skills as well so uh, so yeah he's one of my favourite players to watch these days in, in the competition but at massive credit to the, to the Knights to get to get this one around and, and get so close to so close just so close bless us <laughs> yeah but uh, as, um, as um, John rightly said you know the lack of a first choice kind of at half back and, and certainly somebody with an ability to kick a a one pointer um, cost them both because they were they were getting a bit desperate towards the end. But yeah, it's one yeah, of those I mean, games how where point is probably did, right. How many times did Burton connect with it absolutely sweetly? So he thought, and it just just maybe connected too well as it hooked a little bit at the end. I hit the post. Yeah. Hit the post as well, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> just wasn't to be. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, then the final game have we reached the final game already mm. uh, the Sea Eagles 32 the Bulldogs 6 and Lee Whitnell um, he doesn't say whether he watched this on silent or not but um, we'll leave that to your imagination um, so it looked like men against boys in this match uh, Manly charitably missed most of their kicks to try to make a game of it <laughs> but the dogs weren't up to it uh, they need more than Luke Thompson on the evidence of this one <laughs> And Alan Walker said, reckon the Manly side uh, all spent ISO in the Trebojevic house for two months. They looked like a side that had spent every day part playing backyard footy eyes up. Some of the passing was spectacular. Doggies are lucky that Titans and Dragons will fight for the spoon. I mean, yeah, yeah. we start with probably the third real standout performance uh, of the of the week, you know, we've we've already talked about Tedesco and Williams, but Tom Trebojevic, Tom Trebojevic was absolutely involved in everything, and it's a bit of a disappointment that Garrick scored that try of his own, and it meant that it wasn't, you know, Tom Trebojevic who got the try put together. <laughs> it kind of felt like he didn't deserve to not be involved in one of the tries. <laughs> no, but he's um, yeah. You know, he he was a player that they were talking about how good form he was early on. Um, 
all those, all those weeks ago. And he's, he's definitely 